Hi everybody, so we're involved in working on this, which is our new generation system. At the heart of this is right there. It's a ratchet. It's actually this ratchet, which is the Seiko Magic Winding Ratchet. But ratchets themselves are tremendously useful and used in lots of different places. For example, here is Archimedes Catapult, and that's using a ratchet right there. The ratchet has a long slope here, a sharp slope there that catches, and then when we release it, of course, the catapult will fire. There we go. <laughs> but they're also used in a ton of things, like this for instance, there's a ratchet right in the side there. And ratchets can be super, super useful. Now, I've been saying on the other videos, okay, let's just go and do this, and then presented it as done, because I'd already done this on a previous video, but I haven't done anything on how to actually make the ratchet, and the ratchet itself is a core to many mechanisms. So what we're going to do is go through how to draw and print a ratchet. Now the ratchet we're going to draw is going to be very similar to this one. We're going to do 12 teeth, about 40 millimetres across, and create this ratchet. The same principles apply if you're going to create a ratchet like that, you just make the teeth smaller. So let's get on with this. Okay, grab yourself a cylinder and make that 4 millimetres high, smooth it out, and make it 30 by 30. Now I always start Tinkercad with the ruler showing so I can see how big everything is and we need to cut that circle into the tooth. So to do that, grab a cube, which is a hole, and make it a third, this two thirds the size. So 30 by 20 or 21. Align it to the edge of the circle you just cut and then merge the two and you'll have the basis for the tooth. All we really need to do is rotate that. But we need another circle that we make a little bit smaller and make that 40 by 40 because that's how big our ratchet is going to be and align that tooth. Now the edge of the cord needs to be aligned with the center of the circle that we've just put there. What we do is take another cube to help as an alignment tool and make that 40 by 20 which is half, align it to the large circle and then we'll get the center line of the large circle that we can align our tooth to. We align it by using the arrow keys and it will snap to the grid, but it's a bit difficult sometimes to get it exact, so zoom in and you'll see it's a little bit out, set it at 0.1 millimeter and nudge it with the arrow keys until it's aligned to the center. Once you've aligned that, you can delete it. Now we can highlight the whole thing and we can rotate it because it will rotate a large, around the larger circle. So we copy it and rotate, then we can rotate it to 30 degrees because we want 12 teeth, and then we can click repeat and it will repeat it for 12 teeth for us in a beautiful circle. Then we can delete our alignment circles, and there we go. We now have our actual ratchet. Merge that. And then we can put a hole in the center, and I want an 8mm hole, smooth it, I'll make it 8.2 as a bit of leeway. There we go, 8.2, center those to each other. There you go, there is our ratchet finished. Now we need to make the pole, obviously. So to make the pole, move the ratchet out of the way and grab another circle, smooth it, and this time make it 35 by 35, because the actual curve, remember, was 30 by 30, we want it a bit bigger. Make a hole 25 by 25, because again, we want it a little smaller this time. Align the two of those to the edge and the center, move it one millimeter, there we go, because we want a little bit of leeway. Now if we merge those two, what we get is a crescent. To make the pole, of course, what we need is a, a pivot, another circle, smooth, this time 10 by 10, and then we can align that to this crescent to help us make our pole. Now it's a bit difficult to see it sometimes, so changing the color helps you recognize what's going on. Align that to the edge, and we have a crescent with the pivot where the pivot's a little bit out. So I move the pivot until it aligns with the edge of the crescent. There we go. Now you can see it's just a little bit out there, and we can move that by 0.1 millimeter, changing that setting, and then move that until we align it beautifully. Once we've got it aligned, we have the basis of our pole, because that circle we've just drawn will be the pivot point of the pole, and the inner and the outer curve that we just drawn will make sure that it fits. But of course, we have that 
tooth there at the edge which you want rid of so get a hole which is a block align it with the edge of the tooth merge it and we have most of our crescent the rest of the most of our pole sorry the rest of the crescent we actually want rid of because we only want one part of this so grab a box resize the box hole so that we have a, a more than enough really and then tilt that on the axis by using the tilt keys and there are three ways you can tilt it we want to tilt it that way around 45 degrees as a guess and then we can align that to our pivot point at the dead center of the pivot point and this i just do by r you could center it if you want to and you can see it's a little bit out so let's move it a couple more degrees until we get it lined up with the center there we go lined up with the center move it and then we can merge that again and we get our pole now we need a central hole to that pole, so pick a cylinder centre hole, smooth it, make it 8 and 8, and then we can align to the circle that we put as our pivot point. There we go. And we have an artefact left over, there it is. We want rid of that artefact and we can use the cube hole as a kind of eraser. So if we position that, align it, it'll erase it, position and align, and we have our pole all made. So there's the ratchet and the pole. To print it, export it from Tinkergad, import it into Cura, and we can import the ratchet, and then we can import the pole, and there we go. Now let's check the settings. We don't really need it to be touching the base plate for support because it's a flat, but let's leave that anyway. And it does need a raft with a little bit like that, and then we can, when we're happy with the settings, we can slice it. When it's sliced, then we can do the save to file, and then we can take it over to the printer, press print, there it is, and we can press that, and it will print. And when it's printed, scrape it off with the scraper. And there it is. Snap the raft off and we'll have our ratchet and our pole. And there is our ratchet and pole. So the pole will drop down the tooth, stop the ratchet turning until we lift the tooth and it can then turn and be stopped again. Or it'll only go in that direction because obviously it drops in and stops it in turning in that direction. Now the key to it is that guide circle that I put in. You can put anything you want on top of a circle. If you rotate the whole thing with the circle, it will rotate around the circle and maintain your geometry. And we did 12 teeth, so we had a 30 degree rotation if it had 360 teeth well it'd be a one degree rotation because you want the teeth evenly spread for every degree of turn and now I made the teeth out of circular intersections because I wanted this nice slope for a big tooth like that a little tooth then you probably just use triangles where you have a long and a short arrange the triangle on the edge of your guide circle go around the same way repeating it and you'll create the teeth of your ratchet Anyway, I hope that was helpful. Thank you very much for watching. Please do remember to like and subscribe.